All right, it's time to grab our blasters and head out to the battlefront. The Star Wars battlefront. I think that went without saying, Bajo. Roll the montage. Coming in hot! Yes, from DICE, the developers of Battlefield, comes the highly anticipated reboot of the Battlefront series. And it's DICE doing what DICE does best, which is make large-scale multiplayer mayhem. There are a few activities you can partake in solo, but if it's an epic Star Wars story you're after, then this is not the game you're looking for. That's right, Hex, but even so, I do think this is the most authentic Star Wars experience ever put to code. And I have to say, the amount of Star Wars fantasies this ticked off my list is huge. The things I do for that princess. You know, the Battlefield series has those emergent Battlefield moments, but Battlefront has those Star Wars moments, and in spades. Yeah, there's such an amazing attention to detail, isn't there? Rebel fighters approaching. Centre your defence on our transport ship. The graphics and sound effects are spot on, and when that John Williams score swells up, at times it genuinely feels like you're right there in the movie. Well, I know you're probably frothing at the mouth to talk about how good this game looks, so... Graphics rant away. Oh, Hex. Oh, Hex, it looks so good. In fact, I think it's simply one of the best-looking video games I've ever let my eyes absorb. I mean, just look at these rocks. Look at these spaceships. Oh, the forests. Oh, look at the, oh, and the way things move and the, and the beautifulness and the... Oh, it's a pew pew! Oh, the laser is so good! Oh, Hex, I just want to liquefy it and make a paste out of it and pour it into my eyes and smear it on my body and roll around in a naked yeah, and puddle okay. of it. And... All right, all right, I think your graphics right privileges have to be revoked for a while. But yes, it does look great. And it's so true to the art of the films, which I think is fantastic. I'm it all over. I especially like how good the character models look in third person in their battle-worn armour. Well, let's talk about what's available for the solo player. Or, or, Hex, you could say the Han solo player. OK, that's just your talking privileges in general have been revoked now. <laughs> it's been a long year. I'm just a bit out of puns. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are a handful of training missions which are actually quite fun. These run you through the basics while letting you experience things like doing a run through Beggar's Canyon, going on a speeder bike chase through Endor, and tow cabling ATATs on Hoth. Then there's battles, where you and an optional team of AI face off against another team of AI in a race to collect tokens people drop when you kill them, and first team to 100 points wins. Your superiors will be satisfied. I wasn't a huge fan of this mode, Hex, because it's on the smaller maps and there's no vehicles, and also it doesn't really create the spectacle of the other online modes. It's a bit more enjoyable in the hero battles mode, though. It's the same thing, but at least you get to play with the overpowered heroes or villains. And some of this. And rounding out the solo experience is a pretty standard wave mode where you have to fight round after increasingly difficult round. It's hardly inspired design, but it is definitely the strongest solo mode. All of these modes can also be played in co-op too. There's even split screen on console. It's always more entertaining bringing a friend along. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, take that. There's Ewoks? Hey there, why do they run away when I come near them? <laughs> I just want to talk to you. <laughs> For a wave mode, it seems pretty light on the waves. Whoa. Oh, there they all are. I spoke too soon. <laughs> <laughs> but that's enough about that. Let's get to the meat of it, the multiplayer. Yes, and there are quite a lot of modes, and my favourite is definitely Walker Assault. Here, the Imperials have to protect AT-ATs as they move into position and take out a target. Meanwhile, the Rebels have to protect uplinks, which can call in AI Y-Wings to disable the walkers and expose it to damage. It's the king hit mode of this game, isn't it? Yeah, and it's definitely the one that makes the best use of the license. Waging 40-player battles with all those iconic vehicles flying around while AT-ATs just keep marching forward. I mean, this is so Star Wars, it hurts. Yeah, and Supremacy captures that chaos perfectly as well. It's basically Walker Assault without the Walkers. Or Conquest from Battlefield, if you will, where the teams fight to control various points on the map. Now, 
Now, I know a lot of old school Battlefront fans were disappointed when it was announced there was going to be no space combat. But there is the fighter squadron mode, which is all about dog fighting. You'll just have to be content duking it out in the atmosphere. I'm still hopeful we'll see this expanded a bit and maybe get some space maps like an asteroid field or maybe an objective-based mode like a Death Star trench run. They're probably working on that at the moment anyway as DLC. Yeah, well, fingers crossed, because right now it's a pretty simplistic team deathmatch affair. You all spawn in with a team of AI by your side and just shoot the heck out of each other. Outside of that, I did quite like the two hero-based modes. In Hero Hunt, for example, there's one hero who's the only one who can score points, while everyone else teams up to try and take them down. Whoever gets the kill gets the next go at being a hero. Darth Vader has been defeated. Yeah, it's basically Star Wars tag. It's messy fun, though, and trying to get that last shot in on a hero always ends up stressing the heck out of me. Not to mention the stress when you know that hero has you in their sights. Also a tad unfair, though, that the hero or the villain automatically cycles through the characters. So if you end up getting Boba Fett, then you can keep your distance and rack up loads of kills, while the Emperor is forced to get in close and be exposed. But, like you said, it's messy fun. <laughs> Likewise in the heroes versus villains mode, where you have two teams of six aside, with a mix of heroes and support soldiers. It's just a lot of awesome chaos having all these characters and abilities going toe to toe. Although I do find the ones who use lightsabers, their controls are a little bit awkward. Yeah, there's no real flow to their attack patterns. Let's talk about some of the more general aspects of the game. What did you think of the power-up system? Uh, the little icons that you pick up for power-ups and yeah. stuff. Yeah, I'm not sold on it. Basically, you'll find glowing icons floating around the maps which get you anything from a go in a vehicle, a special item, or a chance to become one of the heroes. Don't get in my way. I think once you learn where they generally spawn, it's not so bad, but at the start, I rarely seemed to find them. Or when I did, someone would swoop in and steal it in front of me. I want to go... You snooze, you lose, Hex. But yeah, it would have been awesome to have vehicles actually spawn and you could walk up to them and get in and take off. Yeah, it's not so cool doing this. No. Alpha Flight Group, where are you? But I get why they've done it. This way they can move the power-up spawns as the battles push through the map, which helps control where players should be and keeps everything a bit more dynamic in modes like Walker Assault. Well, I suppose that's fair. It just makes it feel a bit arcadey, I guess. And it ruins that illusion of being in the films for me, which the rest of the game builds so well. well it's quite arcadey in general, but I don't think that's a bad thing. This is super easy to just pick up and play. You know, it's not as hardcore or punishing as your battlefields and CODs. I never cared if I won or lost a match. It's just about being in the spectacle of it all and having fun. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a pro and a con. This is basically a sugar rush of Star Wars. You jump in, get a massive rush for a few hours, but then you kind of sit back and realise that there's not much more to do below the surface. Yeah, but what a surface. Surface of the year. Yeah, I just feel like there's not a lot here to keep people playing for very long. There's really only a very small selection of weapons to unlock, most of which feel quite similar and you can't modify them at all. And then there are only 12 maps, so you'll have seen them all pretty quickly. We've defeated Vader. I understand what you're saying, but I just don't agree. I think a lot of that is in the cards and the choices you make when you build your deck. And unlocking these along with the weapons gives you a lot to work towards. And I don't really need it to be any deeper than that. This is exactly what I was expecting. Tight shooting with a Star Wars veneer. But I was a bit disappointed that for a multiplayer focused game, there was no built in chat though. You know, I can't just drop into a game and chat over VoIP with other people. I have to use some sort of third party software. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really bother me. I usually play online with friends. We use external programs. It's not a big deal. I, I wonder though, do you want to be able to like rally with your teammates or are you just wanting to yell Star Wars puns whenever you can? Oh, totally the puns. <laughs> I need to be able to say, he came from behind like a hundred times each map. <laughs> even when they didn't come from behind, even if they came from the side, close <laughs> enough. What was that? Move out, move out. Well, overall, I think the amount of enjoyment you get out of this game will directly rely on how long the sights and sounds of Star Wars will keep you entertained. Personally, I was looking for something a little bit more, so I'm giving it three stars. I think you just have to go into this knowing what you're gonna get, which is pure fan service and a bit of online fun. So on that, it really delivers. I'm giving it four stars. That's amazing. It's like my childhood dream house. It's like <laughs> a tree house of happiness and look at all these. Ah! <laughs> you were saying? 